God's beloved people, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In our gospel text this morning, we hear of two miraculous healings. One of a woman who had slowly been losing her life for 12 years, and the other of a young girl who died tragically young. Both had amazing encounters with Jesus, and both were saved. That's the word for healing in this text, or being made well, the word salvation. It goes without saying, then, that this is a joyful story, full of hope and celebration, of life being rescued from the jaws of death by the power and compassion of Christ. This is one of my favorite stories in Mark's Gospel. I am moved by the way that Jesus treated people, regardless of their age or of their status as so-called clean or unclean, Jesus honored people by paying attention to them and listening to them. I'm in awe of the healing that Jesus brings. I must admit, though, that I'm not always sure what to make of these miracle stories. I have no doubt that healing was an essential part of Jesus' ministry, I know that there are some of you listening today who have felt that healing touch of Christ in a very tangible way. My discomfort has very little to do with Jesus. It has more to do with me. I bring my own desires to this text. I've known a lot of sick people in my life, as I'm sure you have. And frankly, the folks who I've known who have been as sick as this woman have died. And the people who have died have not been resuscitated, like Jairus' daughter. In my experience, miracles haven't worked quite this way. So I bring an agenda to this text. I'd like it to promise me that if we just had enough faith, those who suffer from dreaded diseases would be restored to health and vitality like this woman. And I would like this text to promise me that no one would have to live through the death of their child. I would want to spare everyone that experience. I want to comb through this text word by word until I find those promises. But I can't find them. So what do we make of this story? What promises do we glean from it? What I see in this story from Mark's Gospel is the power of God's compassion. Jesus encounters people at the most desperate moments of their lives. Jairus and the woman, these were desperate people. Jairus was the leader of the synagogue, a highly respected position, not only in the synagogue, but in the community. Yet he walked through a crowd of people and fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to heal his daughter. When is the last time you saw a grown man do that? Jairus was desperate. And the woman, she had been bleeding for 12 years. She may not have been poor to start out with, but she spent all her money trying to get well. In her culture at her time, her illness made her a social outcast like a leper. She could not live among people. She could not worship in the synagogue, the very synagogue Jairus was the leader of. She did not want anyone to notice her. She was very stealth as she moved through the crowd to touch just Jesus' cloak. And yet, when Jesus asked, who touched me, she did not remain anonymous. She did not sneak away. She blurted out the truth of her whole predicament. I'm sure it felt both frightening and yet also wonderful to be able to connect with someone on that level. She had been so alone. Jesus met these folks at a point in their lives when all hope seemed to be gone. Everything essential to the life that they knew was slipping through their fingers, and they could not help themselves. In that place of desperation, they were met by Christ. We hear of this happening time and time again in the Gospels, don't we? We hear of this happening in the lives of people we know. When we are stripped of all of the stuff of our lives, the things that give us security and status, when we are down to bare bones, it is often there 
that we experience the compassion and faithfulness of God most profoundly. I don't know why this is. Maybe we are less distracted or more aware of our dependence on God. Or maybe there is a special place in God's heart for desperate people. You could make a pretty good scriptural case for that. Desperation makes us deeply uncomfortable. We would do almost anything, including turning our faces from it in order to avoid it. It seems so shameful and humiliating. But God is not uncomfortable. God's face is not turned away. Jesus wanted to know the sick person who touched me. Jesus walked through a crowd of mourners and entered the room of a young girl. He went there to seek her out and took her lifeless hand in his. God is forever entering into fixed, hopeless situations to bring healing and hope and a future beyond the one that we can imagine. Sometimes that future does include physical healing. Other times it is spiritual healing we receive, peace of mind, acceptance, courage to face whatever comes down the path. These always come as a gift from God, a gift from God's great storehouse of power and compassion. In this story, we hear the promise that we will not be alone in our time of need, that God will be present to bring healing and life. And in this story, we catch a glimpse of the coming reign of God. The people surrounding Jesus that day had heard him preach and teach about the reign of God. He is utterly preoccupied with it in Mark's gospel. But in these healings, they saw the reign of God in action. Christ not only brought them hope in their present situation, he pointed to a time when all creation would be healed by the reign of God. We're pointed to that promise today as well. There will come a time when we do not have to live in fear for ourselves or our loved ones, a time free of disease and desperation and death. Weeping may spend the night, the psalmist in the psalm that was assigned for today said, weeping will spend the night, but joy will come in the morning in the beautiful light of the reign of God. For the same God who healed a sick woman and raised a little girl from the dead will see us through all that ails us in this life, whatever strikes us down. And God will bring us into that time when this broken creation will be saved, will be made whole. In a world filled with illness and sorrow and suffering, we treasure that promise. We place ourselves in Christ's hands, trusting that the gift of salvation which we have tasted in this life will one day be ours in full. Thanks be to God. Amen.